so many people are are traumatized by going to church because of what the church folk the humans did to them not the church the church folk the people and they get the up and they go people. broken people hurt people hurt people and they sit here and they want and they hurt you because you show up and you give and you tithe and you pray and you fast and you do all the things but then these same people hurt you right but then at the same time what about the people that's doing well do they not deserve you do they do just because these people hurt you what about the people that that didn't hurt you what about the people that are there for you what about the church that's actually doing well what about the church that's actually doing what they're supposed to do what about the church that's actually you know stewarding over their 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 flock and stewarding over their finances the way that they're supposed to be doing it, right we don't ever talk about that we always talking about trying to break the church down because uh you know because because your particular welcome 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 everybody my name is kenneth allen thomas i'm here with my wife jocelyn thomas and we are here for another unshakable conversation and let me just tell y'all just to get this episode off the ground uh it was definitely a doozy and everything this afternoon so let me tell y'all how we kind of went about this so we set everything up mind you our goal is to work towards um having a full team to run this for us so we could focus on you know, doing what God called us to do and delivering the messages. So keep us in prayer uh, for that. So right now it's just us running everything, running the cameras, running the switcher, running everything, the audio, all of that. In the last couple of episodes, we had some issues with the audio a little bit, but we are praying that all flows well with this. And yeah, we're bringing it to y'all raw. We're, we're being open, honest, transparent, but the mission and the goal is, you know, is to always make sure that you guys are fed and fed well um, with our experiences, our life experiences. You know, uh, we are a husband and wife team. We have five children. For those that don't know us or don't know who we are, um, a lot of our success from a social media standpoint stems from us being special needs parents, um, you know, with our son Christian who has Down syndrome and sharing the world, you know, just our insight and what we want to talk about and how we know that faith played a big part in where we're at today coming from New Jersey all the way now here in Texas. So, you know, um, come along for the ride, subscribe, like, comment, and grow with us, all right? Grow with us, y'all, you know what I'm saying? So share this with a, a friend, a family member, because we're going to talk about some things today, babe. We're going to talk about, you know, a uh, triggering, trigger, trigger, trigger. <laughs> a triggering <laughs> word uh, being trauma, trauma. So this morning I put on my Instagram how um, a lot of people are holding themselves back from the traumas that they have in their life, holding themselves back from going to another level or because, uh, you know, from from what they've dealt with in their past. They don't want to go forward with that particular relationship because, you know, of the trauma that they had. They don't want to pursue this career or this job because of the past trauma, the pain. They don't even want to go to another church because church folks done messed them up, right? So I want to start off the conversation with, you know, uh, with us, right? And I'm going to go here, like, back to the beginning of our relationship, right? And, you know, you and I both are, um, you know, we have both been married prior to obviously marrying each other. And, you know, we've had some traumatic experiences. And in the beginning, guys, in the beginning of our relationship, we've shared this a couple times before, you know, Josie had some <laughs> insecurity issues, right? And, and you know, it, it, it could have made or, or broken our relationship, right? And we were in a position where either I'm going to be patient to help you through that trauma, in that pain to understand and know that I'm the real deal, or I'm just gonna be like, man, forget this, I'm out, right? So you can go ahead and, and, and you know, share your side of the story and everything on what, you know, that particular trauma was. And my wife shares that trauma in her book, if y'all don't see it back there, it's called Restored as well too, so make sure y'all go ahead and get a copy on Amazon. Amen. Um, reasons why I had trauma in that particular um, topic 
like in regards to like insecurity is because just many relationships that I was in, not necessarily always serious, but just people that I would deal with. Mm. And I thought that had the potential to maybe go somewhere with, um, you know, even my ex fiance, um, I've always experienced some type of situation where either they were talking to someone else, trying to get with someone else while they were dealing with me. My ex-husband went as far as me finding things in his phone, like, you know, sexual conversations through text, yeah. um, sexual emails, mm. just trying to... Um, it's getting juicy, y'all. You know, just trying <laughs> to, you know, get with someone else. Yeah. Um, and then when I got with you, I already had that trauma right. where I was like, who are you talking to? Who yeah. are you texting? Who is this girl texting you? Um, like, why are you on the phone with this female? Like it was always something, yeah. Yeah. you know? And to the point mind where, you, my, my stuff was business related y'all. So yeah. just, <laughs> just to put that out there, go ahead. Right. But it was always just me you know, I didn't heal from that. Mm. So everything to me was, oh, he's probably doing what all these other guys were doing, mm. you know? So it took us a while to get past that. Yeah. It took us a while to, for me to understand and know that you're not like all those other guys yeah. for me to get to understand that, um, that it's okay to have business conversations with females and it not be something yeah. more like I always thought because of the things that I've gone through. Right. You know? Yeah. You know, and, and, and that's the thing. Like, I have I take pride in, you know, making sure that I honor you. And I was at a point in my life where I'm not trying to be the man with, you know, this girl, that girl. And, like, all that stuff to me is kind of corny. Like, I'm just mm -hmm. at a point in my life where, you know, I think every man, every, any real man, especially a man of faith, you get to a certain point where you're like, you know what, it's time to really grow up, right? Because it's, when you come home, it's like a man that comes home, right? A man comes home, what does he want? He wants peace. He doesn't want the drama. He doesn't want all the nonsense. Right. He wasn't doesn't want all of that. And I got to a point earlier, in, you know, in my late 20s, rather, where I but actually, really, like, before that, I really wanted that. Like, I've always wanted that. I always wanted to come home to a peaceful home. I didn't want to come home to all the rhetoric and, and everything like that. Am I a perfect human being? No, I'm not. But I know what I wanted. And for me, w when it came to you, I looked at it as, you know, kind of a challenge in a sense that, like, if I got to prove myself, then I'm going to prove myself. I get it. You've been through x y and z with this guy that guy and it's going to take you some time and i think that sometimes people don't give people the grace and space to actually heal from that right um a lot of people will probably say don't jump into another relationship until you heal from the other one i get it but at the same time how do you how do you really heal or know that you're healed unless you actually you know get into that thing mm -hmm. right how do you know that you can you're actually freed from whatever that was and so you and so it it becomes tested you know what i'm saying so it's kind of like faith right our faith is we can sit there and say all day long that we got faith in in god and we got faith that we're going to do this this that, and the third yeah but that faith got to be tested at the mm -hmm. end of the day it's not until it's faced head on right is people that have you know faith in jesus yo listen okay cool but your faith is going to be tested by an atheist at some point in your life. Yeah. It's going to be tested by somebody who has a different faith in your life. It's going to be tested by all these other people because I really want to see if you really bout that life. So for me, when it came to us, like I had my own traumas too. Like I didn't know if you was, you know, going up and leave me or for whatever because of whatever flaw that I had. But I was just like, you know what, we're just going to ride it out. And one thing that, that kind of like I think our faith got tested early in the game because – you know, we, we had that disagreement and you was like, I'm out. <laughs> and I'm like, hold on, you what? Like, okay, oh, you out? So listen, if you leave this house, right, if you leave, then it's over. Like, you're going to have to make a decision because I was in a position where I was like, you know what? I'm not doing this. I'm not 
going back and forth with the makeup to break up type of thing. I'm just not for it. Either we're going to do it or we ain't going to do it. You left the house, but you ain't leave the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> so technically, you ain't really leave, you know. But I think that when it comes to in, in us growing now, right, let's talk about how 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 do you mend someone's trauma right if there's a woman out there how do you help her through her her trauma and her pain right what are some of the things like obviously whatever through faith and prayer but what are some of the other things that outside of that that you had to do um i think i really just had to aside from obviously prayer like you said and just allowing god to have his way um I think for me, just really getting it in my brain that you're not like those other guys. And although it took a while for us to get to where we are now, obviously, yeah. and even back then where we were, because, you know, when we moved forward past that, it, it was still pretty early on um, where I had to say, like, rather than lose a really great guy that I know is not doing anything. It's just me in my own head. I had to get out of my mm. own head. And I feel like if I, there's a lot of, you know, people out there that love toxic situations. Yes. It's almost like if it's too good, I'm bored. I'm bored. Yeah. Like I need Ugh. to have this fiery flame going yeah. where it's like, like in, I but need in the, the negative, dramatics. Like right. I need that. And like, if what? not, I'm going to do something to cause it to, right. to see, you know, and, and that to me is kind of immature. Yeah. Um, I know for me, I didn't want that. So I had to get to a point where I, in my own mind was like, I'm not going to lose someone that is a good man that I know is not doing anything because of the things that, um, that I have gone through. Yeah. So I had to kind of like really just grow and heal through that. Um, I always say that, yeah, our Lord is the one who heals us, but I always really feel along with that, that you mm. helped me heal mm. because if I was with someone who was like, I don't care what you say. Mm -hmm. I don't care how you feel. I don't care what you've gone through. I'm not them. Mm. So either you believe me or not, but you're not mm. going to see my phone. You're not going to. Yeah. I don't have to prove myself to you, basically. Mm. If I feel like if I had someone like that or if you were that to me, mm -hmm. I don't know if we would be where we are now yeah. or even together or if I would be healed. Yeah. Um, I think the fact that you have shown me your phone and have left it open and have said, hey, I didn't cause this to you. I didn't do this to you. I didn't do that, you know, that trauma to you. But here's my phone. Here's my password. Here's my emails. You have access to it all. Yeah. You have access to mm. it all. I have nothing to hide. Mm. That has allowed me to heal where yeah. I don't have to be in your phone. I don't have to feel like when I hear that phone ring, I'm not like, who he talking to? like you know it's just this thing that used yeah. to happen where yeah. i'm like on edge like oh my god who he's talking to where is he going right now you yeah. said you're going here but are you really going here mm. now i know that in our relationship that where you say you're going you are you are at yeah unless it's a surprise for me <laughs> but <laughs> but um but I, yeah but and that's the thing like think about how god works right like, we have full access to him. Mm -hmm. He's not hiding anything from us. But for some reason, a lot of people feel insecure when it comes to Christ, yeah. when it comes to God, when it comes to building this relationship with God because you think that he's going to leave you like everybody else, mm -hmm. right? And that's why some people don't want to fully commit to God and they don't want to fully commit their life to him because they're like, you, well, you probably just going to do me like everybody else did me. But he you but we have to understand that that's not how God operate. You have passwords, you got the phone, you got t you got every single thing that you can think of in order to have access to God 24 seven. The, the, the fact is, is that we don't use our access. We don't use our our, our ability to go out and, and ask God for these things or ask him why and have these 
these conversations, the tough conversations. See, a lot of people think that it's all good and well where, okay, I can ask God for this and ask God for that. And Lord, thank you for waking me up this morning. And that's all well and good. Yes, thank him for waking you up this morning. But are you willing to have the tough conversations? God, why does she leave? What did I do wrong? Why, why, is things, why are things the way they are? Right. Why? Why did this person leave my life? Why did you take this individual? Help me understand. Right. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that the, it's the peace of the Lord that brings all understanding. And that's what we really got to understand. And a lot of people ain't really ready for that type of peace. We say that we want peace, but we don't really want peace. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of people want the chaos. But if you really want peace, then take on God's peace. No, our, our problem is that we want the peace that we want in our own flesh. We want fleshly peace instead of spiritual peace. And, and, and it's the spiritual peace that brings all understanding, right? Not our understanding, but his. And I, I feel that that there are so many people, like even even today, there was somebody that was saying like um, that they keep receiving bad news after bad news after bad news after bad news. And listen, we've been there. We've been there. We've been in a position where we kept receiving Bad news after bad news after bad news. And it's like, yo, when is it going to get better? Like, God, do you not see that we're going through this, right? And that could be traumatic in itself yeah. when you're sitting there walking with the Lord. Listen, it ain't easy. It is not easy walking with the Lord. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you straight up, it's very challenging. Matter of fact, it's very dirty. Matter of fact, it's very muddy. Matter of fact, it is probably one of the, it could fleshly feel like one of the worst things, yeah. right? It could feel like that. But the reality is, is that we got to go through that pain, that struggle, because at the end of the day, I personally feel that the Lord is, is he's showing us some of the pain that he even feels. Right. How do we have a, a real relationship? We, me and you got a relationship because I feel your pain that I would never be able to to, to empathize with your pain if I didn't really walk with you through it. Right. So we think that God is just just doesn't have any like feeling at all. Right. You don't think that it hurts him that, you know, people are being murdered. Yeah. You don't think that it hurts him that people are, are you know, having just abortions all mm -hmm. willy nilly. You don't think that it hurts him that, you know, that a man is sitting there beating on his wife or a wife is sitting there trying to abuse her hub husband verbally. Right. Or that these kids are abandoned. You don't think it hurts. It hurts him mm -hmm. because he didn't create us for that. So in, in, in other words, you know, I don't think God allows his own trauma to stop him from healing us or mm -hmm. giving to us. Right. Right. It could be very traumatic. I, I, and, and this is just my feeling, y'all. Like, don't 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 crucify me and everything, y'all. I'm just I'm just speaking as vulnerable and as real as possible. And we got to really put on if we really put in on the mind of Christ, if we put in on that crown, we put in on that armor, we put on that helmet, mm -hmm. let's really think about it. Yeah. Because you could sit there and look at Jesus and look at his walk, and, and this man was sitting there going through it. He's going through it because he has to keep tell, asking the disciples to have faith, mm -hmm. right? And, 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 and weeping, weeping so bad that, that he was sweating blood. Mm-hmm. Sweating blood, like I ain't, I ain't never seen nobody sweat blood before. I think a lot of times I hear Christ followers when they're praying or talking, and they say, "There's this one phrase that always comes to my mind," um, and it just came to my mind again when you were talking. Is Lord break my heart for mm. what breaks yours? <sighs> and when I was in my young twenties and I was going to church. Um, I remember someone praying that Lord break my heart for what breaks yours. And the pastor was like, you better know what you're you asking know what the you're Lord asking for, for. Yeah. because that's not a light ass from the Lord. Mm. What breaks the Lord's heart. A lot of times we can't handle. We can't handle. And so in our prayers, we need to really be mindful of what we're asking the Lord for, because if he really broke our heart for the things that broke his heart, we, we probably wouldn't even be able to handle it if we can't even handle the traumas that we're going through on an everyday life and the subtle things, not saying that the things we go through are subtle or light or, um, you know, not big enough. Mm. They are, especially for, you know, our human selves to to take on. But, you know, just in that prayer, just be careful what you're asking God for, because if he gives you, mm. you know, that what breaks his heart 
if he gives us that broken heart, mm. it's it's not easy. You better be prayed up and you better be anointed. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. A lot of people, I think we pray. Um, a lot of people pray very loosely, right? And it's like, when are you? When are we going to understand that we can't say prayer so loose? What I want to commend is I want to commend the people that are praying intently. I want to commend the people. See, what we, what we I don't want to continue to point out the problems without without pointing out some victories, right? I think that that's another thing that you know um, is traumatic for people that are walking with God. Let, let's just take church for example. Mm-hmm. So many people are are traumatized by going to church. Because of what the church folk, the humans did to them. Not the church, the church folk, the people. And they get the up and they go, people. broken people, hurt people, hurt people, and they sit here and they want and they hurt you because you show up and you give and you tithe and you pray and you fast and you do all the things. But then these same people hurt you, right? But then I, at the same time, what about the people that's doing well? Do they not deserve you? Do they do just because these people hurt you? What about the people that that didn't hurt you? What about the people that are there for you? What about the church that's actually doing well? What about the church that's actually doing what they're supposed to do? What about the church that's actually, you know, stewarding over their 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 flock and stewarding over their finances the way that they're supposed to be doing it, right? We don't ever talk about that. We always talking about trying to break the church down because uh, you know, cuz cuz of your particular trauma. No, deal with your trauma. Deal with your pain. You deal with that directly. Don't sit there and chastise the entire church just because you feel some type of way and think that that's everybody bundling us all up and everything into one one space that's not right right i really feel that we have to you know look at look at this thing from a case-by-case basis that's basically saying okay cool paul he sat there and, and killed christians you know what i'm saying all right well guess what this same man was also used to write half of the new testament so what if God sat there and looked at you for every single thing that you did wrong, every single thing that you was, you, 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 he, what if he judged on every single thing? What about every single thought? What about every single word that you utter? Mm-hmm. And then you got the nerve to sit there and say, I don't mess with church folk. Right. And that's, that's my, that's my, that's the thing. Stop, stop pointing out all of the problems just to get a click without pointing out some of the great things in, in giving victory. It's we talk about in, in today's time we talk about giving flowers, right? Giving flowers is, is is a thing. Well guess what? Why don't you give flowers to the people that's actually doing it? See the problem is, right, and I just said it right there, the problem, right? The thing is is that I see a lot of is we glorify what you pointed out earlier, the chaos. Mm-hmm. We point out the chaos in the church but we don't point out the victories. We, we quick to point out the chaos because we don't really want the truth. Mm-hmm. The truth is, is that you know Christ died for you. The truth is, is that you know and I know that when we die, you know exactly what's a, what's re, what, what we've been talking about all this time and what's going to happen, right? But you choose to walk in, in the mm-hmm. flesh instead of the spirit. So I just feel like, you know, people are traumatic and people can't get to another level. You could probably get to another level from a material standpoint but there's more and you and I, I believe that people want more and i believe that we're in a in a season where people people are are gearing up to stop playing church i feel that relationships and i'm believing i'm just i'm 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 speaking uh uh you know prayerfully right now that relationships are going to be mended traumas are going to be ceased mm-hmm. right and 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 old and old curses are going to break because mm-hmm. i believe that people are sick and tired of the same old rhetoric mm-hmm. they just tired of it you know i rem- um like i i you know i remember that like i wrote in my book but this reminds me of you know talking about um church hurt where when i was in my you know maybe mid 20s um I had a pastor that I was going to their church and this was way back when Lord, 
Oh my God, it was uh, such a while ago. Um, I grew up knowing him as a little girl, mm. and then I became a part of his congregation, and he tried to hit on me, and it was traumatic for me because mm. I could have easily said, "Hey, I'm done with church. Mm. I'm done with pastors. I'm done. I'm just done." Because if I'm sitting under a congregation and I've this man has known me from little girl to now adult. I had two kids at this time and I was engaged and um, he really tried to hit on me. And, you know, I told my dad and it was a recording that was taken and I had proof and he did not deny it. Thank God. Mm. Although I did have the proof, there was, you know, truth that he came out and said, hey, yeah, I did. And, you know, my dad, my dad dealt with it and he stepped down from pastoring and all that. But that could have been my justification. That could have been my excuse yeah. to say, hey, I'm church her. I will never 100%. enter into a church again. I will never return. Mm. But at the same, like I always share with people who say that they're church her or something like that. I always say, if someone at the grocery store hurts you, does that mean you're never going to go food shopping again? If, if your boss hurts <laughs> you at your job, are you never going to return to work? If your husband hurts you, if your children hurt you, are you never going to go back home yeah. and say, I'm done with this family? Yeah. You're always going to return to the things that your is your priorities, you know? The Lord and our relationship with God is our priority. Yeah. So saying that you're never going to go to church again or any church again and never giving anyone an opportunity, another chance, just because one person hurts you, yeah. I just think that's a little extreme. Yeah. Um. I do think a lot of times it's because the person just probably may not want to just attend church anymore yeah. in general. So they have, they try to make an excuse. Yeah. To, if you don't want to go to church to say that. Right. To, <laughs> oh, well, I'm not going to go because this happened or yeah. that person hurt me. Yeah. Every church we have gone to, yeah. we have been hurt. Yeah. There have been many reasons, many reasons that we could have left our church yeah. and say, you know what? I'm not going back there no more. Right. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to church for people. Exactly. I'm going to church for me because I have a relationship with God. Yeah. And I'm not going for you. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. You know, I, I was reading this morning, Acts chapter six and seven. Right. And we talked about it a little bit and the disciples were pretty much running a food program. And they said, hey, listen, we should be focusing more on. You know, studying the word and preaching the gospel versus giving out food to the Greeks, Hebrews, you know, and they said, let's let's get seven men filled with the faith to take on this task so that we can go do what it is that we were called to do mm -hmm. delegation right and this is where the unshakable method or whatever comes in a lot because you're communicating right there's there's transformation in, in the mindset right and we're building relationships amen and Stephen who was filled with the faith like this dude was on fire for God like heavy like, this man was going in, preaching, doing what he do. And he ended up getting arrested. And as he got arrested, the, I guess, the church leaders at that time ended up, you know, questioning him. So these two guys, they ended up asking him you know, or, or lied on him because they couldn't get nothing on him. They ended up lying on him and pretty much reporting him to... Uh, you know, the higher ups, so to speak. And what I found very interesting was what did you go through to have to lie on this man? Mm -hmm. What happened in your life that you had to lie on somebody? What happens in your life when you got to hate on another individual? You must be going through something so traumatic in your mm -hmm. life that you can't stand to watch somebody else win. Heart sick. Right? And then he goes on and he gets arrested and they ask him, you know, are these allegations true? Because basically the two guys lied on him saying that he was, you know, speaking against the, the law of Moses. 
And then what I find funny is how Steven went through this whole history lesson, you know, and getting and really broke it all down to them and basically ended up telling them at the end is y'all don't really want the truth. Go read, go read Acts chapter six and seven for yourself. Yeah. Right. Y'all don't really don't want the truth. And because he ended up saying that, they ended up killing this guy. Here's what here's what's funny. They sat here and they didn't want to hear it so bad. They covered their ears and started yelling and screaming mm-hmm. and charged them like little kids. Right. You want to talk about next level petty? Like, that's petty. <laughs> like, y'all petty. Y'all yeah. grown adults talking about we serving the Lord. Right. But that's the thing. You got people that sit there and say that they serve the Lord. But when the truth come in, here they are, hands over their hand, over yeah. their ears, and they send a screaming, la 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 la. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. La 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 la. And then they want to stone that individual. But there's Why? A lot because you trying to like that now. You trying to block the truth from yeah. coming in. Yeah. And then you and they stone this man. And then here's the thing. A, what what type of trauma was you going through that you actually are sick enough to sit there yes. and stone an individual? Yes, yes. What type of mental health issue was you really going through? Cause people are doing it till this day, mm-hmm. right? We throw, we throw our, the stones that we throw today can be from social media, yeah, right. It could be from from whatever. So I just feel like, dang, Stephen. On the other hand, even with all of that, invited the smoke and said, "Lord, forgive them and do not charge them with their sin." Yeah, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. So what? That's powerful. It and I just think that people. You don't you don't understand like there's a lot of trauma, but if you ain't willing to face it deal head on it. and deal with it, you were cho- you you just made a shirt. Uh, we were chosen for such a times for such a time like this, and what if that trauma that you've been through, the trauma that you're going through, was made for you, right? To overcome to bring God glory, because mm-hmm. this ain't about you at the yep. end of the day. So I want to I want to give people um, this. I want to give people, you know, some solutions, right, on how to deal uh, with the traumas. And no, I'm not a psychologist, but you know, when you live 40 years, you learn some things, right? You don't have to be. Um, and this is no discredit to anybody who's a psychologist or anything like that, or licensed professional. I don't believe that you have to be licensed to. <laughs> to know some things or whatever, like that can definitely help you Mm -hmm. along your way. Right. And that's why we use the unshakable method a lot. Like the pillars of the unshakable method is truly what helps, you know, myself and others. Um, Number one, coming to grips with your reality, right? It's here. Mm -hmm. The bad news, it happened. And oftentimes we don't, we don't look at the bad news and we try to um, make it make it something false, right? We sweep it under the rug. Mm-hmm. You are one person that oftentimes we're not going to sleep until we talk about this thing. So what I'm saying is communication in, in, is, is a big factor when we use the unshakable method, right? And using that communication constantly and consistently because you can, somebody can, you you keep sweeping stuff under the rug. You go ahead. Eventually, you're going to end up with a pile of dirt mm-hmm, under that rug. Mm-hmm. You keep sweeping it under the rug at your front door. Eventually, somebody going to sit there and come up to your house, and they're going to sit there and see, yo, like, it's a lot of dirt up under there. Right. Like, what's going on? They're going to see this mountain of dirt because you didn't put it in its rightful mm-hmm. place. You know? Wh- how? Why do you feel like, like, from a communication standpoint, you know, it's so, so important? Because so many people will be missing it. Um, I think it's so important because I think that we, well, we, we all have a voice. We all have a voice Mm. and it's important for us to just be able to share our hearts and be able to be super real and super vulnerable and transparent with other people. And although they may not agree with you on everything that you share with them, the fact is that your truth is your truth and their truth may be their truth. At the end of the day, then there is the truth, the truth, right? Mm. And so it is very important to be able to communicate with people on the things that you feel. Now, it doesn't have to be a, 
you know, negative communication standpoint or always bickering, arguing, mm. fighting, it, it could be a healthy conversation. I always say that, you know, I don't want people in my life that I feel like I can't, can't have a hard conversation with. Mm. Because if I can't have a co hard conversation with you, then we can't have a relationship. Right. Because part of building a relationship, whether it's an intimate relationship, a friendship, whatever kind of relationship there is, there always will be a point that you guys hit that there have to be there there has to be a hard conversation had. Yeah. No relationship is perfect mm. at all. Yeah. There's nobody that can sit here and tell me that they have had a perfect relationship Man, in any if, aspect. If you got a perfect relationship Teach us. Nah, stay far away from me. <laughs> that. <laughs> stay far. If your relationship is that perfect, right? Stay, stay over there. Yeah. I don't even want to be near you because you're lying, mm -hmm. right? Because there's just no way. There's no way, and there's no such thing as a perfect relationship. Then you get the people that say, "I really want people to be real with me. Like, just no, be real don't. with me." <laughs> and then when you be real with them, it's like they can't take it. Now I'm mad at you. Yeah. Now I X you off my list. Yeah. Now we're not friends on Facebook. Mm. Now I don't text you anymore. Mm. Why is it that people say, yo, keep it real when you don't really want the real? Or it's you don't talk. want the you don't want the real that that individual is bringing mm -hmm. because it's too much for you to handle. Right. This why this is why when when. When the sons of Zebedee, you know, they were like, yo, we want to sit at your right and your left hand, Jesus. You don't even know what you're asking for. You don't even know. You can't even drink the cup that yeah. I'm about to drink. Stop saying that you want things and you know nothing about it. Stop saying that you want you want this and you want this life and you want this husband and you want that wife and you want this money and you want that money when you're not even really equipped to handle that. And oftentimes we're not equipped to handle the little bit of what we got. And we and we struggle with that. And we 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 struggling with being okay on where we're at. See, here's the thing. This is why I I, I praise God and I, and I thank God for giving us what we have now, right? Because for for 10 years we we were struggling. Yeah. Like this is no exaggeration, y'all. Like we have proof like <laughs> we, were, we were literally struggling like we were we were managing what little we had right we were managing what little we had did did the lights get cut off no did we not have food did it look like some nights we wasn't going to but we made but but god made a way mm -hmm. right did it did it look like you know bad for our daughter when she had covid and pneumonia at the same time absolutely when our son was battling leukemia, absolutely. When our house was up for sale for eighteen months, absolutely. When we lost our studio, right? After when we, we when we lost so lost long. our studio after building it up, having al almost a hundred kids and everything registered and losing all of that, mm -hmm. absolutely. We were struggling every time that we thought that we were about to sit there and launch to another level. We get shot down. Ten more steps. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, like. The reason why we went through all those things or the reason why God allowed us to go through all those things is so that we could be appreciative of what we have now mm -hmm. and grateful for what we have now. Because sometimes we ask for things and if we get it too soon, you become ungrateful. If you get it too soon, you become unhumble. If you get it too soon, you're going to be the one that's in there saying that I did it and not giving God mm -hmm. the glory and saying that he's really the one that's that did right. it. So this is why you you may still be in the rut that you in. You may be still stuck because we're not aligning, my God, we are not aligning our hearts with God's will. And this is this is very very important in in terms of the relationship. When we use the unshakable method, we have to understand this this key thing right here, right? When you're building this relationship and you're building it with God, a big piece of that is God let me align my heart with your will. It's okay to want want things. Mm -hmm. You want the range. I'm working on it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But is it the Lord's will? Yeah. Right? You people will will sit here and go as far to push you into 
a lifestyle. See, that's what they sell. They, 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 they sell a lifestyle, right, instead of, you know, an eternal life. I'm looking forward to a more eternal life because of the souls that are blessed by listening to this podcast, mm -hmm. right? So I'm not interested. I told somebody the other day, <laughs> I said, listen, I'm not interested in telling people that if you use the unshakable method, that you're going to make a million dollars. Right. No, this is a philosophy. This is something that we use in order to help us in our daily life. And it's all Bible based. Mm -hmm. It's all backed up, you know, by the word. So when troubling times come and they will come, we use this transformation. I need to change my mindset. Boom relationships i need to build that communication mm -hmm. i need to build that resilience i gotta have that mm -hmm. unshakable faith i need that and i build on that daily so what i'm saying is people is that take your take your your traumas and take in and, 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 and let, let's let's start put those things on the coffee table put them on a the dining room table and let's and break it down really break this thing down you know because the only way that you're going to really get what God really has you for gotta you, get to the root. you got to get to the root. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, man. I think that a lot of people, um, you know, you, you can sit there and talk like that, talk all you want. But it don't mean nothing until you actually put some action behind it. Mm -hmm. You know, and to in today's day, especially, you know, our age group and younger. Hey. I would recommend, I would recommend that you start holding yourself accountable mm -hmm. and start looking at the real deal. Yeah. Because the the minute that a storm comes, you're going to want to run away from it instead of running towards it. That's right. You know, I don't know. I, I, I feel like that's for, you know, somebody out there, man, woman, young, old, whoever. Some of y'all, y'all holding yourselves back from doing what you got to do and doing what God called you to do. Because you want to do what you want to do. Or even receiving the blessings that he has for you. Because, like, you want the blessings he has for you. But yet you're envious about the things that other people have that you want. Yeah. That you don't have. But how do you know that that's what God has for you? Mm, it goes good. back to what his will is for our life. That's good. It's like, you know, people are jealous of you and envious. Like, because they're like, oh, well, I want what she has. Or I want what he has. You know, and I don't have that. Mm. And I don't want to see it, so I'm going to block you. I'm going to delete you. I'm going to remove you. All of that kind of stuff. But why not be genuinely happy for people? Mm. You don't know what the cost was to get there. Yeah. You don't know the cost of my alabaster box. Come on. Are you going to be able to go through what I went through mm. to get to the blessings that he has for me? Yeah. Because we all got to go through something. Yeah. We got to pay a price. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, he paid the ultimate price, but we have to pay a price. Oh, yeah. Are you ready for that? Mm. I, I, I want to say, yes, that that's good, because being genuinely happy for people, this is the one thing that I've always said. We just want to see people win. It brings us joy when we see people winning, mm -hmm. like like for real, like. I got homies that be like, yo, bro, I just did X, Y, and Z. I just made 150K or whatever in a month. Bro. We like, have never withheld any, like, helping anyone in any situation. Yeah. Like, if we didn't want to see people win, we would be like, I'm not going to teach you to do that. Yeah. Or I'm not going to show you how that works or whatever the case is, you know? There have been 100%. on every occasion where someone has access for help whether in podcasts, mm -hmm. whether in finances, photography, yeah. cricket, me printing apparel, social media, social media, any aspect that people have access in flagging yeah. ministry. Hey, can you show me how to do this? Can yeah. you show me how to do that? Can you do a small tutorial? Can you walk me through this? Can you help me? Yeah. We have always helped. Mm -hmm. We have never been stingy with our knowledge and with, you know, the gifts that the Lord has placed us with. Yeah. That's how you know that someone's not jealous or envy and yeah. envious or hating on you. Yeah. If I know it, why would I not teach you? Because think about it. Like, I could be going tomorrow. 
Who's going to continue? That's right. Who's, Pass the baton. Who's going to continue? You're holding on to something like you're going to sit there and take it to heaven with mm-hmm. you. Like, yo, if you got knowledge on how to help me in my finances and I'm asking, yo, like, help me. Yes. Yo, hey, listen, I'll even bless you and break you off, you know, whatever I can. But the thing is, is that we live in a society where the enemy will play tricks on our mind. Yo, don't hold that information. I mean, don't, I mean, hold, don't I mean, hold, I mean, hold, don't, don't share that information. Don't share that information with them. Why? Because because they 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 this or they that. Or what if they do better than what you? What if they do or better what, than you? That's the point, right? <laughs> and that's the thing. You want people to do better than you. Yes. I got dancers that I've trained from young that are on tour, right? That have are widely successful. That have gone on to do many things. Have I taught them the things that they know now? No, but I gave them a foundation. Mm-hmm. I gave them a starting point. Right. And from that starting point, they went to another teacher or this or that. And that's like, I love it. That's perfectly fine with me. Yeah. Because if if I was if I was a true hater, I would sit there and say, yo, don't learn from this person. Don't learn from that person. Don't do this. Don't do that. Because I would be trying to hold them back. Yeah. Now, do I agree with, with, you know, everything that they do? No, it's mm-hmm. not my life. Right. It's not my life. However, I pray that the example that I set, that they yes. at some point look back on and say, you know what, maybe I should do things a little bit yeah. differently or do things this way or that way. You know, but you got to learn. And I would rather you, I'd rather you uh, learn than experience mm-hmm. because this way you know that when a situation comes up, you've already learned it and you ain't got to go through it. But experience sometimes is in my opinion, it's not necessarily the greatest teacher because it hurts yeah, and it's going to hurt mm-hmm. and it's going to bring what trauma. Right. So just learning in, 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 you know, early. So in having the wisdom you want to, you want, y'all want to pray. Y'all want a prayer. I'm going to tell you what to pray for. You better pray that God gives you discernment and wisdom in life. Mm-hmm. That is one of the most like, that is some of the best, that's the gift that kind of supersedes a lot of things. Because what good is money if you don't know how to spend it? What good is a home if you don't know how to take care of it? Mm-hmm. What good is having, you know, anything in life if you don't know how to manage it? Right. Right. Ask God, God, make me, you know, a a, 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 a better manager. Help me be a better shepherd. Help me be a better father. Help me be a better steward. Help me understand your ways. But when he gives it to you, apply it. Don't just, it's not enough to sit there and say, I know it. It, You got to take the next step and say, I'm applying this thing in life because this is what the Lord has called me to do. I'm supposed to steward over things that come my way. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. So I think that the one thing that the Lord has blessed me with is um, patience. Right. And I think that my patience oftentimes get tested the most with my children. Yeah. And he's trying to elevate my patience to another level. Because there's more. If you can handle your patience with your children and inside your family. You can pretty much handle patience in in the outside world. Mm -hmm. People, you won't be so easily offended if you have a child that tries you from time to time, that thinks that they know better than Mm -hmm. you do or whatever the case may be. Or maybe they just have a different method and that method you can learn from, you know, but it gets, it got, it gets to a certain point with me where I'm like, okay, Lord, I am a very patient individual, but what is the point with how my children sometimes may uh, disregard what I say? You know, like I'm I'm an amazing guy to all these people, but then I'm reminded, Kenny, you can't even be a prophet in your own home. Mm-hmm. Jesus only did three miracles because they didn't believe, or they was too familiar. Mm-hmm. So be patient with them because at some point it's going to turn around. Be patient because when they're 25, 30 years old, they're going to look back and they're going to see like, yo, 
all the things that you told me, all the things that you try to show me, I now understand. Mm -hmm. And And that's real. And that's real, right? I think one of the favorite, one of my favorite things that I love about you is, is your patience. I don't know if I can necessarily be with, like, I'm not going to say, I don't know if I could be with someone who was impatient, but I think it would be a lot harder to be with someone who's impatient um, because I'm impatient. And I think what draws me to you is your patience. You were patient with me when I was insecure in the beginning of our our relationship. You've been patient with the things that I needed to heal through. You are patient with, you know, the kids for the most part. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You're patient with just our journey. Um, you know, that, that the Lord has had us on with all the things you named earlier for the 10 years. What have we gone through? You have been patient, you know? And it inspires me as your wife to be more patient. Mm. I would say that I have grown somewhat in my patience. 100%. um, Because before I used to be extremely impatient, it Mm. made me sick to my stomach. Mm. (laughs) I couldn't stand it. (laughs) Um, And I still have to work on my patience. But, you know, being with someone who is patient, um, it inspires me to say, wow, he's so patient. And Mm. he's not losing his mind because you know, we're going through this hard season or he's not worried and he's not fretting when we're going through this hard, tough season. So I know that if he's okay and he's solid, then what do I have to worry about? You know, so that helps me. So I say to you, continue to be patient because I am inspired. (laughs) Thank you, babe. (laughs) I appreciate that. Listen, everybody, let me end it off with, you know, an inspiring word. Like, we talked about trauma today. We talked about now patience. And I want y'all to know that everything that you've gone through is not for nothing. God wastes nothing. God wastes nothing. I'm t- you talking to a man that has been struggling for years, and I would even say years even prior to being with my wife. But I always saw that God has something great for me. I always saw and knew that there was something on the other side. I just had to keep going. I had to keep walking. I had to keep pushing. And at some point, he's going to bless you. At some point, he's going to show you this is all of what I was trying to show you. If you just stay a little patient, if you don't just, if you don't jump into the pool too early, yeah, right, if you just gain the wisdom that I'm trying to show you, if you just go through the process just a little bit, I'm telling you it's going to be worth it. And I know that some of y'all are going through the roughest times. I know that some of y'all are looking at your finances and you negative $45, mm-hmm. you negative $100, you negative. Yeah, the negative is going to turn into a positive. Yeah. I'm telling you right now. That was our story. That's our, that's our testimony. The you Lord had us say things so we can show at some point. Yeah. Because people are not going to believe people are not the believe things it. that we We've have We've screenshot through. how many times we have been negative yeah. in our bank account. You know what I'm saying? With five children. And then in those same days, like, we would, we would work. We would hustle. We would do all of what we had to do. Some would even say, well, why wouldn't you just get, you know, a, a nine to five? Right? And we've tried. But the thing is, is that God has always blocked it for some reason. And I know for a fact that our family dynamic and how we work, it has to work with us here. It has to work with us together. Being apart, that's where things are going to fall apart. We can only be apart for so long so that I can go out and do what I do and then come back. But it can't be like days on in like that because this is not how he operated us. But I would just want to encourage somebody and say, hey, listen, yo, you may have been going through this for five years. Some of y'all maybe are only a couple months in. I'm telling you, see that thing through. And I know it sounds cliche and I know it sounds like, oh, my God, I've heard that before and this and the third. But I'm trying to tell you, right, you look at us now. You can go on Instagram. You can go on YouTube. You can see what our old house used to look like. You can see all of that. And I'm not just trying to sell you on materialistic things, but I'm just trying to show you on what God has done in our life. It's not about the material. It's about what he's doing, right? And showing that 
This is where I took them from. This is the the before. This is the after. Or not even the after. This is the going through. Yeah. This is where they're at now. This is the present time. So my encouragement to you is, husband, keep going. Wife, don't give up on them. Hold on a little longer. Hold on a little longer. Children, children, hold on to your mom. Hold on to your dad. Push them, right? Encourage them. Love them, right? Husband, you know, console your wife. Reassure her. Tell her that it's going to be okay. Tell her that things are going to work out. But ultimately, keep God first in your life. A three-folded cord is not easily broken. That's you, that's your wife, and that's God. Mm -hmm. Tie that thing together and can't no devil break it. Amen. Amen. So with that being said, y'all, listen, my name is Kenneth Allen Thomas from my wife, Jocelyn Thomas. This is the Unshakable Conversations. We hope that you guys, you know, enjoyed uh, kicking it with us. And uh, we will see y'all next time. Make sure you share this with a friend, share with a family member, share with a coworker, and continue to subscribe. Listen, we are on our way to 1,000 subscribers on this Amen. YouTube channel, okay? We're on our way. We're at a little over 520 right now. All right? So go ahead and, you know, Hit that subscribe button. It's going to help us help others. It's going to, you know, by you subscribing, by you liking, by you commenting, it's going to drive up the algorithm and all that good stuff. And listen, let's take it to another level. Let's do more work for God and let's take more territory for the Lord. Amen. So with that being said, like share, I always share, share. say, when we change the mind, we, we change the, the game. game. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow worry about itself. And today is all, all we have. got. And if today's all we got, you make sure that you go ahead and put everything that you got in today the best way you know how. We love y'all. We see y'all later. Be unshakable. Peace.